On Saturday, July 29, 1967, the USS Forrestal was at Yankee Station off the coast of Vietnam. In light of what eventually happened on deck that afternoon, it's only natural that some have looked back and questioned, wondered, specifically about the lack of safety procedure. The time is 1351 and counting. There, on deck. Somehow a Zuni rocket has been triggered, roaring across the flight deck and hitting an A-4 Skyhawk. A sheet of flame from the A-4's ruptured fuel tank has enveloped the Skyhawk and her immediate neighbors. Behind that curtain of smoke, two 1,000-pound bombs have already dropped from her wings onto the burning deck. Here, almost at mid-screen, we see a crash crew chief moving toward the flames with a Purple K fire extinguisher. His only thought, the trapped pilots in those planes. In order to control the fire, the captain orders the Forrestal to slow speed. Back on the flight deck, with precious seconds ticking away, things have started to go wrong. Fire has completely blanketed the stern fire main loop, making its plugs inaccessible. And the next to the last loop aft has developed pump trouble. The only alternative is to haul hoses aft from the forward stations. And this takes time, precious time. 1352 and 43 seconds. The two main fire parties are now on deck working close to the flames, but so far only one hose is actually operating. The first explosion carries a message. The forest all is in deep trouble. It won't end here. The chain has started. And yet those who have survived it turn around and head back. There are buddies back there, and the chief with the purple K is dead. A fire at sea is the ultimate nightmare for any safety. You can't run away from it. There's nowhere to go. Following the third explosion, the first two fire parties had been virtually wiped out. The fire was not completely out of control. A great ship was on the verge of dying. To save her, other men were going to have to go back on deck, most of them without sufficient training in firefighting techniques. Down below, fuel was pouring through holes in the flight deck caused by the continuous 1,000-pound bomb explosions. The fire had chased after the fuel, spreading quickly to the O3, O2, and O1 gallery decks and into the after end of Hangar Bay 3. Topside, the only hope was that the explosions would somehow subside. Until they did, no firefighting team could possibly survive on them. In all, during the fire's first five minutes, nine major explosions would take place on the flight. As the first of the injured were brought to safety in a sponsored area, another relief party was already forming up. And they knew what they needed most on deck, the foam hoses. For some unknown reason, one or more of the fog foam stations hadn't been initially charged. On deck, the relief party's first move was to lay down a curtain of foam between the flames and the Forrestal's island. Once this buffer zone was established, some of the damaged planes could be moved to safety. Along the port side, where most of the armed aircraft were parked, things were still out of control. Leadership and on-deck communications were early casualties of the Forest Hall fire. Damage control and repair party personnel were often unidentified for long periods of time. As a result, when some of the more inexperienced people did lend a hand, they made several well-intentioned but nearly disastrous mistakes. At one point, close to the island, two water hose teams were working in tandem with a foam hose team. The end result, the water washed away the foam, and the fire continued blazing away. 
two destroyers in the immediate vicinity took turns moving in to supply what they could and continued picking up firefighters who had gone overboard. Four minutes after the fire started, the divisional doors between hangar bays one and two and two and three had been closed, effectively isolating each of the bays and preventing the spread of the fire. In hangar bay three, the sprinkler system and some effective work with the foam hose kept the fire confined to the engine shot and the after end of the bay itself. On deck, the first sign that the battle was being won was the presence of white smoke. Obviously, the foam and fog nozzle teams were doing an effective job. But here and there, several glaring errors were still being committed. Several hose teams had men who were without shirts or protective gear of any kind. A fuel tank explosion close up, no matter how small, would have burned most of them to a crisp. And almost unbelievably, some of the water hose teams were still hard at work washing away the protective blanket the foam teams had laid down. Here and there, black smoke had actually started rising again. By mid-afternoon, helicopters from the carriers Ariskany and Bonhomme Richard were arriving on deck with fresh foam and OBA canisters and then taking the overflow of the Forrestal's wounded back with them to their sick bay areas. The fire on deck would end on the afternoon it began. The fires below would rage on through the night and into the evening of the following day. The obvious lessons to be learned from the Forest Hall tragedy are these. Original, in-depth training in firefighting is vastly important, but so is constant retraining. Every man on board should have been familiar with the ship's firefighting gear and its use. Some men never reach their general quarters stations. Others, unsure of alternate exits or ways out, were trapped below and died. Many of the firefighters lacked leadership. The chain of command had to be rebuilt on the spot after the first two firefighting teams were decimated. Too much time was spent struggling with items like the OBA. Some of the men actually had to stop and read the instructions before they could use them. Only untrained men would spray water across a foam blanket that was doing its job. Only untrained men would hot handle unexploded ordnance or kick it across the deck with their feet. These are things that can't be learned on the spot or after a fire starts. The fact that the men of the forest all pulled it off is a tribute to their coolness and courage. But we'll never know how many men were lost because some things were done the wrong way. In all, 134 men were listed as killed or missing. Damage to the ship, exclusive of aircraft and other air equipment, was estimated in excess of $72 million. The Forrestal Fire is a story of extraordinary heroism, trial and error under unbelievable pressures, and tragic death. It's a story that the Navy clearly would rather not live over again. So.